The crowd is right here. Holy Jesus. Hi, I'm Andre Faust. Well, you can see I've got my COVID-19 hairdo. Anyway, what we're currently witnessing is unprecedented. The global community is coming together and condemning the United States for police brutality against African Americans, which unfortunately often ends in costing the lives of African Americans at the hands of the police, with the perpetrators never being held accountable for their actions. These legitimized killers live their lives to the fullest, while the families and friends of the victims live their lives in deep sorrow. This is not the first time that police used either excessive or lethal force against African Americans. A well-documented incident of the brutal beating of 25-year-old construction worker Rodney King Remember that? So at least some of us that are young enough remember it. Fuser advisory is recommended at this time. The following video contains scenes of disturbing violence. Initially, Rodney King was stopped for speeding by the Los Angeles police. The LAPD forcibly dragged him out of the driver's seat of his car and started kicking the out of him. Very simple, as shown in the video. After the beating, authorities confirmed that King received f facial f uh, fractures, a broken ankle, compromised kidney functions from the beating. Charged are four LAPD police officers with the beating of Rodney King. However, the courts acquitted all four officers of their criminal actions. Within three hours of the news of the acquittal, an eruption of riots flared up in South LA. The current murder of George Floyd by the police, unlike the civil rights movements and the apartheid era, the video that captured the slaughter of George Floyd has caught the attention of the world. Almost every country participated in rallies, demonstrations, and protests denouncing the USA for the murder of George Floyd. Yet, each country reflecting on how their police and society discriminate against their people of color, other races, nationality, and religion. We like to call ourselves a civilized society, but outside of our technological cosmetics, we haven't evolved much since our pre-Neanderthal days. Once we realize that all life matters, then we can call ourselves an advanced society. Everyone has the right to civil rights and liberties. I'd like to thank journalist blogger Charles LeBlanc for the use of his Ground Zero videos of Black Lives Matter rallies. You can check out Charles LeBlanc's other blog by typing in his name, Charles LeBlanc, in your favorite search engine. Coming up are the highlights of the Black Lives Matter and the still photos of the rallies. filtered 
Like there's a border agent whose sole duty is to stop racism at the border. And any black person in the audience, any person of color really, will tell you that that's not true. We can't lie to ourselves and say, and say that Canada is Mississippi, but we all know that racism still exists today in Canada, and we've all experienced it in some shape or form. But I thought more about the, the general feeling, because it's not just in Canada, it's around the world. Canada has this little utopia of tolerance and freedom and kindness. And I say, there's some truth to it, right? Like, we just look at the history of North America. One of the greatest historical figures of North America is black, is female, and is American. She's on the twenty dollar bill, and she's sitting in the twenty dollar bill of the U.S. Her name is Terry Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone here, everyone here is familiar with the story of Terry Tucker. Everyone here knows something about the Underground Railroad. Need to know now. Pretty much, it's just a way the slaves in the states were able to escape to the land of freedom. We can so in in our in our mindset, in our in our country, in world history, Canada has always been held as that magical, that mythical place where slaves go to get free. Right. So that permeates throughout our culture, throughout our propaganda, throughout the way we sell ourselves to the world, and in some ways, it's very true. Right? When you read of the cowering accounts of the slaves escaping to freedom, you read of how they saw Canada as this beacon of hope, of freedom, and of liberty. I can just imagine a harried slave who had been chased by packs of dogs, by multiple slave catchers, just landing in the borders of the River Creek, Nova Scotia, or Ontario. Just imagine that the great, breathe that the cold air, just feeling like, finally, finally I'm home. And this was a theme, right, that the Crown offered freedom to the black loyalists to fight against the Americans during the Revolution War in 1812. And many black people in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick are proud descendants of those people. And if you look at this, did great things. You look in the field of medicine and you look at Anderson Abbott. He was one of the first black surgeons in all in North America. And he was so good, so good that he was a personal surgeon to President Abe Lincoln. Right? And then you look in the military, you look at someone like Mr. Nelson, who was the first Atlantic Canadian, first of the Scotian, first black person, black person ever to win the Victoria Cross for military bravery. And then, and then in the world of sports, you look at our very own Perkins William Reed. Right? He was the first one to play in the NHL. And then one of my personal heroes is Barack Obama. US in 2008. However, Canada had already had a black head of state. The Canada drum was, was became the government drum in 2005. So as you see, Canada has been a leader in many of these issues. And I can't name the countless refugees that came from the genocide in Rwanda. I cannot name the countless refugees that came from wars in Bosnia, wars in, in Syria. That the countless refugees whose only crime was to love someone that their state didn't think they should love. And that came to Canada because it was a land where gay people could get married. Canada has a lot of great things. And honestly, I wish that the history books and the headlines stopped there. I wish that that was a whole story. I wish that Canada really was this amazing, wonderful, wonderland where everything is perfect and Everyone has a little deep blue. Um, <laughs> but th that's not that's not the reality. No, I'm, all, I'm black and I'm only black. I'm only, I've been black for most of my life before I came home. So I can only speak about my own experience. But 
that. If you go back and you look at all the events of Hawkman, let's start first with the Loyalist and with the uh, escape slave. They came here, they shared their block with East Country, but they were harassed so much. In fact, one of the uh, laws that were passed was the uh, Negro Frolics Act. The Negro Frolics Act regulated how black people could dance, how black people could sing, and how black people could dress. Can you imagine one of those old stuffy white men seeing Carter here or Beyonce Court? They were having a heart attack. Or can you imagine them seeing Lil Nas X in suit and talk to the Grammy? Right? So, but they were oppressed so much that they decided to leave Canada and found the African country of Sierra Leone. So these enslaved slaves, these guys who gave the life of the country, were still harassed so much from the land of freedom that they had to leave. You look at that. A guy like William Reed, who lost his right eye in his fight to get to the lake because he was constantly, constantly afraid of trying to find that stop. When you look at his personal statement to Abe Lincoln, he tried to open a practice in Canada and was barred from doing so. He was good enough to be the surgeon to the president of the U.S., but was not good enough to treat patients in Canada. And then finally, I talked about a lady that was on the $20 bill at the station that's slated to be on the $20 bill at the station. I'm going to talk about a lady now that's on the $10 bill at Canada. <laughs>